Okay, hello, grade 8. And so this is the continuation of our lesson in electricity. So last time we have discussed about uh, what an electric circuit is. We have also discussed the elements of a circuit, namely voltage, current, and resistance. And we have also discussed the relationship of those three elements by discussing Ohm's law and also <clears throat> and also uh, solving the equation using V is equal to IR. And so now we will be continuing with our discussion about the different types of circuits. So we ha actually have um, <clears throat> and so we actually have um, a device at home that we usually use at Christmas that is concerned or well we can say it's related to circuits okay so have you ever thought of what will happen if you destroyed one of your light bulbs in a christmas light di ba yung christmas light yung syempre yung mahabang string of lights na may iba't ibang bumbilya okay so um, would it be a waste of money if, let's say, for example, if you stepped or you destroyed one of the light bulbs, do you think all of the light bulbs will no longer work? Or is it just a few? Or they will still work, yung ibang light bulbs? Okay? So, in this discussion, we can, um, <clears throat> and so we can understand the mechanism that happens behind Christmas lights by um, by discussing the two, the two types of circuits. Okay, so let us go to the first one. Okay. And so first we have a series circuit. So this contains more than one electric apparatus connected one after the other in a straight line. So it's as if that um, all of the components are connected. So just like in the picture here at the right side, as you can see, we have a battery and we have three resistors that are connected one after the other. So we just place one component and then a wire and then another component, another wire and then component and wire until you complete the full closed circuit. So for a series circuit, we only have a single pathway for the electric current. And as you can see, uh, we only have one pathway here. And so, kung makikita nyo, ayan, so if, if you're going to use conventional current, uh, we will start from the positive terminal and then we only have pathway to go through. So the current will only go in one pathway. So it will start from the battery and then to resistor 1, resistor 2, and then resistor 3. That squiggly line there is a symbol for a resistor. Okay? So you can look at your textbook to look at the other electrical symbols used in uh, circuit diagramming, okay? And then, uh, of course, since we only have a single pathway, so what would happen if, let's say, one of these things are removed? Do you think that the current will continue to pass through? So in our experiment um, in the next day, uh, you will know what would happen if if this will still light up or not, okay? Pero since we all know that it is connected, and then if this is, let's say, for example, this is disconnected, do you think the electricity would still, or the electric current will still pass through? Diba hindi? So it will not pass through anymore. So in connection, if these resistors represent our, um, let's say we have light bulbs in this one, so, of course, what would happen to the other light bulbs? They will no longer light up. Okay? So, in a sense, um, in, in a Christmas light, there is a string of lights that are connected in series to each other. So, if you destroy or one of those light bulbs get to be destroyed, then the string of light bulbs that are connected in series with that um, certain light bulb that was destroyed will also um, not function anymore because they are connected in series. 
So let us look at the ways on how we can look at the different elements of um, a circuit. So as you can see for the current, the total current is the same when it passes through all of these loads. Okay, so dahil nga iisang daanan lang, meron lang tayong isang current na meron sa kanilang lahat. So that's why the total current of the whole circuit is equal to the current that passes through each of these loads. And as for the resistance, the total resistance of the whole circuit um, is equal to the addition or the sum of all the resistances of each load. And as for the voltage, of course, since there is only um, one pathway, so the whole, the EMF of this battery will be shared among these lines. So magsishare sila sa isa't isa. That's why the voltage across these loads are also the sum of the total, which is uh, coming from the battery. Okay? And so now we will have a sample problem. So let's just take note of this one. So again, current is equal across all loads. For the resistance and for voltage, it's just the sum of all. Okay, so now let's have this um, sample problem. So what is the <clears throat> equivalent resistance of the resistors shown above? And But it's actually right here below. And, and then what is the current flowing through the whole circuit? So we're also looking for the total current. And what are the voltage in each resistor? So this is our given already uh, written at the top of the picture. So we have a voltage, total voltage of 20 volts. Resistor 1 is equal to 6 ohms. Resistor 2 is 4 ohms. And resistor 3 is 5 ohms. Okay, so this is already our given. So let's write it here. And that is our given. And then we are looking for the following. So the equivalent resistance of all the resistors. So we're looking for total resistance. We're also looking for the current flowing through the whole circuit. So we're also looking for total current and the voltage in each resistor. So we're looking for V1, V2, and V3. Okay, so the voltage across of these resistors. So for our equation, and so, <clears throat> so we will be still using Ohm's law. And um, first, to get the total resistance. And so we will be just adding up all of those resistance. So we have R1 plus R2 plus R3. And then to get the total current uh, by using Ohm's law. So the total current is just equals to the total voltage divided by the total resistance. Okay, so, yun yung equation na gagamitin na. And then, for the for the voltage in each resistor, we'll be using Ohm's law, which is V is equal to IR. So, um, we'll just use V. Uh, to get V1, you will be using I total because in, an elect in a series circuit, the Total current is equal for all uh, loads. So the current passing through R1, R2, and R3 is just the same. So we will see, since we will be computing for IT, and so we will use that one to get the voltage across each resistor. And then for R, of course, to get the voltage, and I we will use, to get V1, we will use IT times R, one and then to get v2 we will use v uh, it times r2 and to get v3 we will use it times r3 okay and so for our solution i think wala na tayong space um sige ano muna tayo so for the solution so let's first solve for the total resistance so for the total resistance we'll just add up this so we have six ohms plus um four ohms plus five ohms so for the total resistance we have uh 15 ohms yeah. 
Okay, so i-take note lang natin yung sagot na iyan. So para hindi natin malimutan, ay ilagay natin siya dito. So ang RT natin ay 15 ohms. Kasi ba mamaya kailangan natin magbura, wala ng space. And then to get the total um, current, so, yan, so we'll just use the VT over RT. So we have 20 volts divided by RT, which is 15 ohms. But we should count 15. Yeah. So IT is equal to so 20 divided by 15 is 1.33 amperes. And then for the voltage, so to get V1. Mm -hmm. So to get V1, uh, we'll use 1.33 amperes times uh, R1, which is 6 ohms. So V1 is equal to and 1.33 times 6, we will get 7.98 volts. And so we will use the same uh, solution to get V2 and then V3. So siguro sulat na lang natin yung sagot natin dito sa taas para kita. And, um, you can just write your own solution for V2 and V3 kasi same lang din naman. Ganto lang gagawin nyo. Um, you will multiply 1.33 amperes with the value of the resistance of the um Ayan. So, lagay natin dito sa taas yung answer. So, for the answer, so we have RT, which is equal to 15 ohms. We have IP, equal to 1.33 amperes. V1 is equal to 7.98 volts. So for V2, 1.33 times 4, still using the equation, ito yung ganto yan, ito. Yan yung gagamitin nyo. Papalta nyo lang yung nandito, ng 4 and then 5. Okay? So, yan. So if we have, for V2, we will have 5.32 volts and then for V3, we will have 1.33 times 5. So we will get 6.65 volts. Ayan. So ito yung answer natin. Nalagay ko na lang sa taas. Okay? Ayan. So if you, if you want to check the voltages, um, what you can do is you can add all of these things. So let's just add them up. Let's see if it's going to be 20 or near to 20. Because we have rounded off, so we expect that somehow we will get a close answer but not an exact 20 volts. So let's add 7.98 plus 5.32 and 6.65. As you can see, we got 19.95 volts, which is close to 20. We just, um, because of the rounding off that we did, um, we didn't get an exact 20 but it's close enough. So it means that, um, yeah. So we got the correct voltages for each um, resistor. Okay? And so clear na ba yung dito? You can just replay it if you want to. So that, um, yeah. Okay. So I'm going to clear this up. So now let's go to the second type of circuit. Okay, so the next step is a parallel circuit. So a par parallel circuit contains more than one electric apparatus connected side by side. So it means that um, side by side, um, they are connected. So uh, more there is more than one pathway for the electric current that is directly connected to the voltage source. As you can see, um, we have a parallel circuit at the bottom right. So this is our battery. And 
then we start from the positive terminal using the conventional current. So we'll start here. And then as we go here, the current has already a choice to move forward or to go to the resistor one. So there is more than one pathway for the electric current. So that's why uh, current code can pass through here and then go back to the negative terminal. And then uh, another choice is that it will start from the positive terminal, then go through R2, then back. And another choice is for the positive terminal, it will start there and then go to R3, and then it will go back to the negative terminal. Okay? So again, there is more than one pathway. So we have um, a choice for where the current will pass through. Okay, so since all of the loads are connected directly to the source, then they share a same voltage. So in series, the total current is equal is equal to all the loads, but for a parallel circuit, uh, the total voltage is just equal to the voltage that each of this um, that each of them will use. Because all of them are connected to the source. Diba? So starting here, you can go to R1. Starting from the battery, you can go to R2. And starting from the battery, you can reach R3. So they, um, they are connected directly to the source. Okay? So they share the same uh, total voltage. And so kaya siya equal sa isa isa. And then as for the current, since the current is... Um, since there is more than one pathway, so the total current is divided to the current that will pass through. So, for example, the current passing through here is different in R1. So the current passing through R1 is different to the current passing through R2, and that is different to the current passing through R3. So if you add all of the currents passing through each pathway, then it is equal to the total Current. And then as for the resistance, the total resistance, um, to get that, um, you will use this equation. So the total resistance is equal to the reciprocal. So we have 1 over RT is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3 and so on. Kung, um, as long as, let's say, if you have five resistors, it will go and continue to until uh, 1 over R5. But since you only have three here, it will continue to be like that. And so after getting that, the sum of that, then you will get the reciprocal to get RT. Okay? So to demonstrate that, so let's just solve another sample problem. And so we will use the same values as we used earlier, but we have a different diagram. So for sample problem number two, using the same values for the sample problem one in our parallel circuit diagram, the one found below, get the equivalent resistance of all the resistors. So we have to look for uh, R total. And then we, we should also look for the current flowing through each resistor. So we have to look for I1, I2, and I3. And we have to look for the total Wait lang. Total current. That should be... Wait lang. Wait, I should change this one. Wait lang. Okay, tama pala yan. <laughs> um, and so we will be looking for the total current also. Uh, we will not be looking for the total voltage anymore because... Uh, i sorry, we will not be looking for the voltage across each resistor because Vt or the total voltage is going to be the same for all resistors. So for R1, we will use Vt for R2 and R3 also. Okay, so let's solve this one. So again, we have our given here. That's our given. And then for the required to find, siguro liitan lang natin yung sulat. Okay, we are required to look for RT. We're also, uh, we're looking for 
current clone creates resist resistor. So I1, I2, and I3, and I total. So yun yung hanap natin. For the equation, to get RT, we'll use 1 over RT equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. And then to get I, uh, we will use Ohm's law. So I is equal to V over R. So, depende na yun kung anong I yung gagamitin natin. Kung I1, edi VT over R1. Pag I2, VT over R2. And for I3, we will be using VT over R3. And to get the total, uh, we can just add up I1, I2, and I3. Okay? So, for our solution, ito natin siya lagay. So, let's look for uh, RT first. So, 1 over RT equals 1 over R1, which is 6 ohms, plus 1 over R2, which is 4 ohms, plus 1 over 5 ohms. So, we will be getting, okay, so if you have an SB PAM calculator, um, and I suggest that um, ayun, you divide first 1 divided by 6 plus 1 divided by 4. Ayan. Pero ayan. Basta dapat ito yung maging sagot mo. So 1 over 6 plus 1 over 4 plus 1 over 5. You should get 37 over 60. That is the fraction form. But we will be using the decimal form. Ayun din. Mas madali pala pag ano. It's either you can use ayan, 37 over 60 or gamitin natin pare. 0 0.62. And so that is not yet RT. So, because you have to get the reciprocal. Kasi, ano yan eh? Uh, 1 over RT equals 37 over 60. So, kailangan muna natin kunin yung reciprocal niya. Okay? So, then na So, to get RT itself, you have to get the reciprocal. So, and so, uh, we will get the reciprocal of 37 over 60. 60, so 60 divided by 37. So we will get uh, 1.62. Or if you're going to use 0 0.62, uh, kung decimal yung nakuha nyo. So 1. Sige, isulat ko na nga lang yun. How did we get that? So, to get RT, get the reciprocal. So, 60 over 37. So, we will get, na ako kanina? 1.62 ohms. Or, if you use 1, uh, 0.62, so 1 over 0 0.62. So, 1 divided by 0.62, you will get 1.61 ohms. So, we only have a difference of 0 0.01. Um, bakit magkaiba? Uh, it's different because we rounded off 0 0.62. Okay. So... And, but it's still close naman. And, and I will look up your solutions. And so this is how we can get RT at napuno na ang ating laga. Um, so let's write the answers here at the top again. So RT is equal to 1.62. And so now let's look for the... Um, <clears throat> so let's look for the... <clears throat> 
Hanapin na natin yung O. So, delete muna natin tong lahat. Make sure na nakopya. So, ngayon, let's look for the current. So, to get I1, so let's have the total voltage, 20 volts divided by R1, which is 6 ohms. So, we have 20 divided by 6. So, we have 3.33 amperes. To get I2, use the same 20 volts divided by R2, which is 4 ohms. So, divide natin. We will get 5 amperes. And then for I3, 20 volts divided by 5 ohms. So, we have 4 amperes. And then to get the I total, let's just add this all up. So we have 3.33 amperes plus 5 amperes and 4 amperes. So our I total is 3.33 plus 5 plus 4. So we get 12.33 amperes. Actually, there is another way to get IT. You can uh, use 20 uh, Another way, or 20 volts divided by the total resistance, which is 1.62 ohms. Yeah, so, you will get the same answer, 12.35. So, it's just a matter of um, points something. Okay? So, you can use either way. You can add up all the current from each resistor, or you can use the total voltage and then divide it with the total resistance. Either way, you will still get the correct answer. So let's just write our final answers here. So I1 is 3.33. I2, 5 amperes. I3 is 4 amperes. And I total is 12.33 amperes. Okay. And so that's it for our electric um, circuits. And so I'm going to clear this now. And let us proceed to our next um, slide. So this is the last part of the lecture. So now that we're done talking about um, the two kinds of circuits, let us uh, look at this problem. So we all know that some of you might have this at home. You can see that in um, an extension cord, you have placed a lot of plug-in devices. Like, for example, you put in the for the TV, for the speaker, for the gaming console, or the sound system, or the aircon, etc., etc. So. Um, there are times that you can or you might have this type of connection, but actually this is dangerous. Okay, so now uh, this is what you call overloading because um, and we will be talking about electrical safety now. Yeah, sorry, we're going to But anyway, yeah, so it's, uh, yeah, um, there are a lot of accidents that might happen because of our carelessness in handling our appliances or handling our electrical devices. So we should really do something about uh, keeping us safe. So how do we solve this one? And so, yeah, so this is actually called overloading. So it occurs when an added load in a circuit increases the current. So again, um, just like what I've told you before, if the current that is indicated on the device exceeds that one, then it might destroy the device, such as chargers. Diba? So you should be very careful into the uh, sockets that you place your uh, devices because here I think you have 220 volts. So there are some outlets that will give you 110 
Ayan. So, kailangan alam natin yung pinagkaiba. Ayan. So, <clears throat> anyway. Ayan. So, it occurs. Ayan. And then, added load. It increases the current. And then, because of the increased current, there will be production of heat. And that heat can cause the burning of the insulation of wires. So, it can cause some fires. So, there are times na um, when this happens, you might smell a burning um, burning rubber scent. And so, if that happens, you have to turn off or unplug right away the device. And another solution for that one is to add a fuse or a circuit breaker. So, those are the two devices that can make an open circuit. But if the, a circuit is open, the current cannot pass through. So, what these two devices do, the fuse and the circuit breaker, is that they break. So, for example, if the current is still at the uh, safe, safe uh, amount or the safe value, so it will remain connected like this. But if the current exceeds the specified amount, like let's say, for example, uh, it says here that this uh, connection can only carry 5 amperes. But because you added another load, so there is an added current. So um, the current passing through the connection is already 6 amperes. So once uh, that device um, detects the increase in the current, so it will break. So, sisirain niya yung connection para hindi na dumalo yung current. So, it will uh, open the circuit. It will destroy the connection, but not in a destructive way. It will just um, paano ba? It will just remove itself. Parang switch. It acts as a switch to turn off the um uh, turn off the closed circuit. So, gagawin niyang open so that the current will not pass through to prevent fires and such. Okay? And next, yeah, so, as you can see, uh, aside from the increased overloading, and we can also have overheating. So, if overheating happens, uh, we can also experience the same thing, excessive heat. And that excessive heat can cause the burning of insulation. So, it is the excessive heating of appliances beyond the safe temperature range. So, syempre, um, there is a certain temperature that appliances can, um, can withstand. So, that's why it is important to not overuse your gadgets. So, for example, your laptop or your TV, um, it should not be used all the time so that it can have a time to cool down and to rest so yeah so of course when of when there is heat of course it can cause um, when there is an increased temperature and there is heat so it can burn some of the materials in our electrical devices so that's why uh, one solution for that one is to increase the diameter of wires for appliances which tend to produce more heat. So, for example, if you see that the device has a small diameter of wires, such as chargers, then it means that um, that device doesn't really produce that much heat. But if you look at our bigger appliances, like the refrigerator or the washing machine, they have thicker um, wires compared to the phone charger wires that you have. It's because that these larger appliances tend to produce more heat. That's why to prevent overheating, they have to have they should have a larger diameter for their wires. Okay? So but those are just one of the ways to avoid that. And another thing is have you experienced being electrically shocked? Then you may sparks then Okay, so syempre, ito yung ayaw na sparks natin, yung kapag makukuryente tayo, di ba? So, that can be prevented by grounding. So, what is grounding? So, it is the connection of an electrical appliance to the ground, literally to the ground. Because, um, sige, bisan ko muna. 
so that excess electrons cannot damage the plants or the human beings to have electric shock. Um, bakit? The earth or the ground, yung lupa natin mismo, that is a electron reservoir. So there are a lot of electrons that tend to go down there. So that's why uh, when we connect our appliances to a ground, the excess electrons will not go to other um, to another human being. Like let's say, for example, um, have you experienced like, for example, touching a washing machine and then you experienced a shock? It's because maybe it's ground. It's not grounded. So the, it's because of the excess electrons that found itself on the surface of the ayan, of the washing machine. Eh, di ba? Uh, it's a metal, and metal is a conductor. Di ba? So the connection to the ground ensures that the electrons will go to the ground and not to another human being, which causes electric shock. And so... Actually, I have an experience before in matter. Do you know, do you still remember the large electric fan uh, construction at the gym? Yung malalaking gano'n na may apat na electric fan sa gymnasium natin. And so when I was a student there in matter, um, I experienced grounding when I was in fourth year. And at the same time, we have been discussing about electricity. So what happened is that um, I touched the metal yun, it's a metal the 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 yung lalagyan ng electric pan yung apat na electric pan na poste it's a metal so I touched it and then after that after touching it I became a ground as a means for the excess electrons in that um machinery basta yung poste ng electric pan na yun, yung excess electrons nun, dumaan sa akin at pumunta sa ground ng gym. Ayan, lalo na kasi yung suot ko nung sapatos ay hindi siya rubber. Ayan, so, naka-sandals lang ako nun or something. Basta, I experienced electrons passing through me because of touching the um, ele electric fan post. So, um, that should be prevented. <laughs> Ayan, so, May sparks, pero ayoko yung ganong sparks. Masakit. <laughs> Sobrang nasyak ako nun. So, tinanong ko yung physics teacher ko nun, si Sir Ed Rieza. Tapos sabi niya, ah, it's because you were, uh, you acted as the ground for the electrons to pass through the ground from the electric fan post. Kasi yun, dumaan yung mga electrons sa akin, kaya naramdaman ko yung shock. Ayan. So, minor shock lang siya. Pero syempre, if, let's say, for example, the current or the um, appliance or it's a larger machinery, then it can cause damage. Especially if electrons pass through a human being at a larger scale, it might burn them. Diba? So, kaya may mga namamatay because of electric shock. Ayan. So, yun. Konting sharing lang. Anyway, so, Another thing is we can also have double insulation. So double insulation means that we have an additional layer of insulated material for appliances which are not grounded to protect humans from electric shock. So if ever the device doesn't have a ground or a means to connect to the ground, they double ice, they double insulate their devices. So nagaad sila ng let's say rubber or ng any other insulator or cloth. Basa kahit anong insulator material to um, to prevent the crossing of electrons. Okay, so the next slide will show you um, a picture of the three-prong plug, three plug. And so, di ba most of you have that, um, ito, yung bilog, this rounded, uh, ito, the rounded piece there. So that is actually the third um uh, the third connection is actually the grounding of the material. So there, so sometimes it is okay to remove that one kasi hindi naman siya talaga technically nakaka-affect sa paggana or sa pag-function ng ating device. But if you remove that one, you are removing the safety 
of the device kasi uh, gagana pa rin naman yung device mo pag tinanggal mo yan itong bilog na yan yung extra na ano pero it will um, if you're not careful with your electrical device then um, it might harm you so to be safe even if it's a hassle to use um, an adapter to connect to a ano and so better na mag adapter kayo kaysa natanggalin niyo pa yung extra na yung extra na metal thingy na yan so that is actually the grounding connection so as you can see here at the left we have your um, sockets that have space for that one so ang ginagawa niyan is we have that that socket yung third socket na yon yung third na butas na yon it connects to the ground. Okay? So, kaya yung mga sockets na may tatlong butas, yung third na butas na yon, yun yung, kung, pag nag-connect kayo dun ng, um, ng plug, co-connect siya sa ground. Okay? Para hindi maging delikado pag magkaroon ng excess electrons. Okay? So, yun lang. Okay? So, this is it for our uh, chapter 7. And, and next week is already your exam. So, the pointers, the, I will post din naman this on your Facebook group. But the pointers is uh, heat and electricity for the monthly exam next week. Okay, so yun lang. Have a good day. Goodbye.